Hey, guys. Is there... Uh, do you see the line in the middle? It looked like there was a split screen. Oh, like... <laughs> Like we were, see it right there? Like we're like COVID green. protected? Yeah. All right. No, <laughs> Six no, feet? No. no line. We're here. We're both here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that until just now. Hey, folks, it's Thursday night. Uh, you stayed up extra late. You must have been good. Your parents let you stay up. Um, we want to say thanks because I guess you wanted to stay up extra late to watch episode 29 of Low Expectations. Man, that's refreshing. Oof, it's gonna be. I'm I'm really excited for this. One. Uh, I mean, we he he unearthed this little gem for a pre-show beer. Which well, why don't you tell the kids you want the can? Oh yeah, I, I, thought, I thought it was back there. Um, to, we're jumping right in tonight, guys. <laughs> the pre-show is called Sleeveless Tea Summer Lager. It is with tea, lemon, and natural flavors. And believe it or not, it's by Amagong. Who you know? I didn't know they made refreshing lagers. No, um, that was surprising no. me. So I'm gonna, I'll put the can on the pour cam there. It's got people on little lemony rafts, and man, it it was delicious. So did you tell them that it was a tea beer with lemon and honey? I thought so. It's a lager. My God, my God, that is like the perfect picnic cornhole type of beer man i could crush it reminds those. me of imprints arnold palmer's that they were mixing yep um this uh, e even a little crispier a little lighter crispier and lighter mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. it's good i will be going to buy a case of this this is something to keep in your fridge Whoa. this is really nice look at the size of that glass you got going on oh tonight. it is a big glass it's a special glass uh, they're all one? special yeah, yeah but, um Lately on the news, not on the news, in the nerd news, uh, some photos have leaked of Harrison Ford filming Indiana Jones 5. So I pulled out my Raiders of the Lost Hop. Cause That's great. Indiana Jones. Yeah, I love coming that. Back. That's an awesome glass. But it's, you're not messing around with that glass. You, when you're drinking out of that glass, you're telling the world something is happening I'm tonight. Thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> this is a 21-ounce Willie Belcher. Is what they call I'm it. a big fan of the Willie Belcher, and, and I'm not just saying that. I really do like that style of glass. Mm -hmm. But I don't possess a 21 ouncer. I think I can fix that. I, I may, I, I may have a couple. <laughs> I, 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 I think so. In, in, the, in the beer glass museum that he runs next door, uh, I am doing cranky mo because I am cranky tonight. I'm very cranky. But I'm hoping, like, and my, my first, my pre-pre-show beer was No Bueno. I'm not going to tell you who it was. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Because, and you know what? To be fair, the beer I had, I got, it was an IPA from a brewery that's not known for IPAs. So, Correct. Um, and it was just a throw-in from a friend who picked up other stuff, other stuff for mm -hmm. me. And, um, yeah, it just wasn't good. So I was like... I told I told in the mix I was like I picked this glass because this was the mood I was in and I was hoping my pre-show beer would adjust that face but actually it just reinforced that face until you showed up with your pre-show beer now the worm is turning a little bit yeah, because kinda, that's this is really good yeah I kind of wish we would have saved it for the show and not done, not done it as like a pre-show because that one is is really killer um, is Omegang the um sorry about that is Omegang the uh, brewery that did um. The Game of Thrones beers? Yes. Did you have any the, of the Game of Thrones beers? I had one, and it was good. Amagong makes a solid beer, but they're always heavier on, the, like, more on the Belgian side. At least I thought they were. And then we get this crispy, delicious lager that blows us, blows us away. Are you, I, a, are you a Game of Thrones fan? Yes. Um, Until the end. F them. I would like to do an Omegon Game of Thrones episode. Oh, I bet you we could get can our we, hands Can we get those. our hands oh, on a bunch of those? I have really big mugs, too. Like, different... like. House mugs and I like I'm, house Targaryen, and I'm guessing house you have Stark. some type of hat or helmet that we could wear too while we drink them. No, I you wish don't? I did though, like a Viking helmet. Yeah, or something? I can't believe you don't have a hat or a helmet. That's right no. up your alley. Yeah, I don't have that. I wish I did. All right, I can start searching. We'll think about it, but I think I'll that'd be a cool it. idea. So, Sounds but like a challenge tonight. Tonight is all about the refreshers, yeah. the thirst quenchers. The it's hot out. It's not about. You don't have any type of agenda. There's not a lot of thought going into it. You just know that you're going to be thirsty and you want a beer that is going to address that issue. I want a beer-flavored beer yeah. that's going to be crispy and just take away that heat. Take it right out of you. And light. I want to, I want to be able yeah. to like glug, 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 glug it. Oh, look. 
Look at the bottom of the screen. Do you see it? No, I didn't see it. There's three. Do you see the little see the little dots at the bottom of the screen down there? Oh, they're chavatars. Yeah, the, the little the little chat balls. Oh, you got it. In the mix, got it working. Yeah. So so <laughs> our friends who jump in. Your balls now show up at the bottom of the screen. I, uh, I hope you took a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> You're down there. <laughs> I thought I smelled something. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, uh, Travis. <laughs> Here's a blue. Uh, yes, Archer, you're correct. Sessions, check. Rattlers, check. In fact, I wanted to do a Rattler tonight. And Shandy's, check. Check, 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 check. He's making faces. I don't know why he's making faces. Because I haven't brought this up to you yet. Oh. <laughs> but as I was searching, I found, and I took like eight pictures of really, really great potential Shandies and Rattlers. Yeah. We need to do just a Shadler Randy show. A Shadler Sh Randy? Sh Sh Shadler <laughs> Randy? He's Shandy. our next guest. <laughs> Shandy Rattler. Just Shandies and Rattlers. Um, I took a bunch of pictures to share because I, there, were, there were so many really good ones yeah, showing that off. I was like, we got to stick with just Krispies tonight and then go with like all Shandies, all Rattlers. I like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah. So that's in the works all because right. I thought of it and then forgot to mention it. Have you ever had Schoenhofer? It's the grapefruit one. It's oh, like grapefruit yeah. soda. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, 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 oh, like, so like, good. Like, I love you, that. Wait, I took so many great pictures when I was walking through the beer distributor. There's some great stuff out there on shelves. Really amazing. So anyway, should we open this first beer? Let's dive in. All right. First beer tonight is brought to you by the Imprint Brewing Company. I'm sorry, the Imprint Beer Company. This is the Mosaic Wallpaper, a dry hopped Pilsner. And let's crack it open. Krakatoa. Ooh, the beautiful little... Uh, it's yeah. not smoke. You guys couldn't really see it off-gassing, but it was, it was off fabulous. Off-gassing, that's what we'll call it. That's great. Here we go. Oh, oh my goodness, it's so clear. You can see right through it. Look at that. Now, we have to be careful tonight because... There you go. We have to share these three ways. Because oh, yeah. Nathan from In The Mix Sound & Light, oh, he loves his lagers. So he is going to try everything that we have tonight. Um, just to... Because he actually will, and he'll enjoy them. He does enjoy other beers from time to time, but this is his kind of episode. So, so. just a tiny little bit ahead. Some nice lacing, though, when, I rock in the, when I'm just rocking the glass back and forth. I didn't get to do an aggressive pour because I have a small glass. You don't have to keep, just when you're ready. We're, we're not going to rush you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, know you're yeah, doing yeah. work. <laughs> All right, so while Tom is getting uh, in the mix set up with that first beer, just want to remind you of the housekeeping stuff. You guys probably got the link through Facebook group, um, Low Expectations. Um, thank you for being part of that community. I love that group. You guys crack me up. Uh, you're watching us on YouTube right now at Low Expectations Beer on YouTube. And you can also find us at Aim Lowest on Instagram. So uh, if you keep up with all that stuff, that is fantastic. And we appreciate it. What do you think of this? I think it's great, but there's also a... Uh, what I miss? Hi, I'm Tom. Oh, this is B. I'm B. I forget. Welcome. I know, we totally forgot. Welcome to Low Expectations, where the beer is always good. And um, we're so bad, we didn't even do the tagline tonight. <laughs> 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 While you were going down, I'm like, oh man, we forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, the 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 tea beer made me dance, and now this is just like I can literally picture myself outside when it's like 90 degrees, and you hand me this, and I am the happiest dude on the planet. In the shade, in my camp chair. This is a thirst quencher. Mm -hmm. This is it is light. It is refreshing. On the boat. By the water, sitting by the pool, anywhere. On the finish, I get, a, I just get a little kiss of that mosaic, just on mm -hmm. the finish. Definitely not overdone on the mosaic, and but it shouldn't it's there. be. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's there. It's really nice. They do a great job with their, their very light dry hopping when it's called for. Um, he, the brewers over there. I'm, I'm so full disclosure. I have a relationship with Imprint, so I try and tread lightly whenever we have the beers mm -hmm. on their show because I don't want to sound like I'm biased or anything. I will say their traditional beer portfolio does not get enough love. No. And it usually, just those beers in general in the last couple years have not gotten, gotten love. 
but it is changing. Did I threw that magazine at you today? You did. I, did he, you see what it said on the front cover? Uh, it was a homebrew magazine, yeah. and when he threw it at me, I wasn't expecting it. So there was a little bit of pain involved, and there may or may not have been some name calling. Yes. So I didn't actually read the front cover. Oh. What did it say? Well, um, <laughs> it came in the mail today. It came in the mail. And today. as I page through it, the entire brew your own magazine this month is, or this quarter, or whatever, whenever I get it, is dedicated all to pilsners. All different Pilsner recipes, how to brew a better Pilsner. Have you ever brewed it a Pilsner? It gets into lagers. No, because honestly, I did not love them until the last six, seven months. <sighs> I have grown a huge, huge appreciation for them. I'm about a year ahead of you on that curve. Okay. And once again, it's because I worked at the beer garden all year last summer where it was surface of the sun hot. And I was out there incredibly hot. And I didn't want an IPA. I didn't want an IPA. Mm -hmm. It was too heavy. So I was drinking Mexican lagers all summer. That's So that's when I started to like them. When I went to the beer garden and you were like, yeah, you got to try this. The, the jalapeno one. Ooh, that's when I was like, whoa, I need to give these another try. I need to see if, if I actually do like this type of I beer. I think it's another one of... These beers are another subset or another category of beers that... They have a niche. They have a place. They have a function they fulfill. Of course, Travis is only drinking his stouts. It's okay to each their own. You know, some people are only Coors Light. Some people are only stouts. And, cause <laughs> and those two people would just <laughs> on the same planet somehow. <laughs> um, I had no idea. Look at this. Even Hudson Valley's getting into Pilsners. I've never had a Hudson Valley. Wow. I don't know that I've had anything other than a sour from Hudson Valley. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah. So. And it's been a minute. Mm. So this was this was really good. It was good. It was really good. I've got to say, if I had to choose between the two, and we're talking summer heat, I'm going for the tea beer. Mm. That one had that sweet lemony to it, and I, I I'm leaning that way for this one. I don't know which way I would go. It's this, literally a toss up for me. Yeah, this has its purpose though. That was great. It definitely does, and I'm excited for what we have coming up too. Uh, all right, so before we move on, okay, we just had a pilsner. Mm -hmm. That style of beer, you know where it originated from? I do now because I read those show notes, but this is good info. So uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and share Czech Republic. Info. Originally yeah, originated up. Uh, have you ever heard of Ur Urquell? Urquell? Ur U R Q U E L L. You've never had that beer? No. Pilsner Urquell. Um, it can, it's readily available. U R Q U E L L is the OG granddaddy of Czech Pilsners. Okay. Um, and. I think we talked about this. We talked about kind of like our gateway craft beers. And that was originally kind of part of my gateway into craft. My local distributor would have a mixed case. That was in it. Peroni from Italy. And there was some type of Polish beer in it. So those three. And I thought I was super cool. I was drinking that mixed <laughs> Imported. case. Imported. But that Czech Pilsner was banging. Um, <laughs> they technically fall into the lager category. And we're going to talk about lagers a little bit later. So a Pilsner is technically a lager. It falls into no that, idea. that broad category. And um, I, w I would have put it, wow. And okay. you people out there saying, wait a second, Pilsners are German. Yes, they're a subset of Pilsners. They're usually a different color, though. They're like, like a pale gold and very, very crisp, while the Czech version, slightly darker with a little bit higher bitterness. Like more roasted or more malt? Malt. More malt? malt. Yep. Okay. So that's our check. That's our Pilsner lesson for the evening. Peroni is great. Yeah. It's cool. Imprint makes a killer Kolsch. Yeah, that light hop that dry that lightly hopped Kolsch. Mm. Uh subtle indifference. Yeah, subtle indifference. Green and white green yep. and white label. Yeah it's good. Mm. Yeah it's good. Their traditional stuff is subtle killer man. Indifference. Is it subtle indifference? I, something indifference. Yeah, something. It's, in, it's indifference. I should probably know that. <laughs> anyway, what a great start to the show. I am now, my frown start. is upside down. I'm is happy. It, is it time for another? Yep. Okay. That's the great thing about these beers. They are so light. They're so refreshing. It's like, it's not, no offense, Travis. It's not like a barrel-aged stout right. where you're, you got to sip it and take your time and let it, let, it, let it warm up time. You got to bring out all... Nope. These guys are like... I'm cool. I'm refreshing. Let's go. It's like the water slide of beer. And we knew this was going to be a pretty quick show. Yeah. We figured it was, this, this one's going to go quickly. Yeah, so we chose not to add more beers. 
but to just go with the normal number of beers and just go a little faster. Yeah. So, because we don't want you guys staying up too late. No, tonight's second beer. I'm super excited about this. Is Forest and Main's House Lager. It is a 4.8 percent alcohol by volume, and this one was canned in June 2021. So it's fairly fresh. Freshy. Keep cold. Drink fresh. All right. So when you see the slides for Forest and Main. They don't really have a logo. Huh. I had a really hard time finding a logo. You know what I had a harder time finding? What? Any frigging information about them. Oh. They're so low key. You, I, I can't find anything about owners, when oh, they opened. Oh. Getting information about Forest and Main was really tricky. I am going to send you a great link because I started to do a little research when I found out that they were moving and I found a great article that kind of laid a lot of stuff out. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll share that with you because it was a, it was a really cool read because I didn't know a lot about them. Right. Yeah. Well, you would appreciate, you can see the slide up there now. Uh -huh. um, right. I kind of put I love that what picture. reminds you of their can <laughs> I art. love that picture. And I, so I grabbed that one. Actually, that's a photo from, and it, the photo credit's on there. It's from someone from like Google... Google Maps, mm -hmm. and that is that's what I think of when I see Forest and Main. Yep. So instead of their logo, I put this because I, th I think of that's that, Forest and, and I think of that tiny little inside room. Um, <laughs> I want to get there before, if it's not too late. I want to get there, and I want because. All right, let's we'll reach out. You can sit out. For, well, I don't know if we can go in, but like personally, me, um, I want to go there and I want to sit at that picture table. Goodbye. Sit at that picnic table picnic table out front and I want to have a beer. I don't know if they're still letting people inside the tiny house. I don't know if that's gone, but I definitely, I want to scoop that vibe up a little bit. Let's check into it. Okay. Ooh. That was a nice one. That was a, nice one. That was a crispy one. That was like a oh, That was That was crispy. Now I'm expecting, compared to the last one, I'm expecting a little bit darker. Yes. We'll see. Just a touch darker. And get a little bit of a Aggressive pour there. I'm going to pass Ooh, that on. Let's see. That, I like the carbonation level in that bad boy. Touch hate. Look, there is a touch of haze in there. Um, the head looks beautiful. All right. Oh my I'm God. excited for this guy. I went. Yeah, <laughs> you you went a little aggressive. I went super <laughs> aggressive on the pour. I did that. <laughs> this is an old school B love imprint pour from back in the old days. I need some more beer in here. Sorry, in the mix. You're going to have to wait for this one. The smell is solid lager. It's just, it's lagerlicious. Oh, you know, it has a slight sweetness mm -hmm. to what deserves an honorable mention, no matter what, here at least once during this episode, to Narragansett Lager. Um, this has that touch of sweetness to it at the back end, which Narragansett also has. Some people don't like that. I like it. I really like that. I, I think at this point we can we can pretty much say that Narragansett is the house beer of low expectations. Oh, that is definitely the house beer. Yeah. Um. So, and we also forgot to mention real quick. What? Nate just cheers. Oh. He was up there. Cheers, Nathan. <laughs> hey, hey, buddy. He's so excited about tonight. Like, literally, this is his night. <laughs> this is his night. Uh, these are beers you could probably get out of a vending machine. <laughs> these are beers to eat popcorn with. So it's, it's, it's <laughs> guaranteed to enhance guaranteed to enhance the flavor of any Slim Jim. <laughs> um, wow. I, it's hard to get excited about a lager, but... This is just a really good lager. That's, this is just, and that's what I was going to say. It's I'm not going to get excited about it, but I'm going to tell you that this is a solid, solid lager. So um, the imprint, um, Pilsner, I forgot to mention, 4.03 on untapped, because some people like the untapped. Uh, this guy is a 4.16. Do you know how hard it is for it's loggers like to get over four? It's to be a 4.16, wow. So ladies and gentlemen, I will do this. If you have the means, the wherewithal, and the time, go to Forest and Main and order yourself a four-pack of the house lager. Just don't do it now because a friend of mine picked this up for me yesterday, and they sold out. 
Oh, did they sell out? That's yes. pretty awesome. That they're selling out of lager, yes. which is that's great for, in my opinion, the entire beer community. The fact that places are in a couple days, or in under a month, honestly, can sell out of a lager or a pilsner. It means the, the tables are turning, or at least the pendulum is swinging more towards the middle, where where it's not all just hazy, crazy. That's next St- weekend. Stuff that's really good. Hazy and crazy's next yeah, weekend. I mean, that's this good week- stuff. But then, you know, you can get into, like, real, really good, well-made classic styles, and people are appreciating those again. So after work today, I hit the creek, and I went fishing, and I covered about five miles, and when I got back to the car, I pulled the waders off, and literally, like, I was just dripping in sweat, and I was so thirsty. My God, if I would have had my hands on this, I would have just crushed this beer. So you don't do just like river sandals and get wet? Yeah. Go in the water? You yeah, do I'm a, waders? I'm a waiter guy. <laughs> I'd be right in there. Yeah. Too, there, hot, there. too hot for me. There was a, there, I could see that. There was a dude in there coming out who uh, had the aqua socks on and uh, yeah. he had sneakers on though. He didn't have sandals. But yeah. That's what I would do. But, but I was like dripping in sweat so this would have been fabulous. Splendid indifference. Yep, that's what it. What were we saying? We, we said saying, subtle. That's because it. there's a subtle machine is a different beer yeah, yeah. that's another, like, crispy. The 5% stouts are the summer chuggy. So beers. it's awesome seeing the bubbles. We saw uh, Archer. We saw Travis. So if anybody else is out there, pop in and say hello so we can see your balls. Oh, look at that. Okay, so the, now, the, now, now, now the balls are back up. But for a minute, they were in front of the ticker. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's cool. So the balls go behind the ticker. Ticker in front, balls in the rear. Okay. That's makes sense to me. All right. We're learning things. We're learning. Did you say tickle? Ticker. Oh, okay. Ticker. I guess cross it out. That was good. I enjoyed that one. Very solid, great beer. I look, look, I want to savor this, but it's the nature of this beer to just glug, glug, glug it. Yeah, you I don't can't... savor it. And honestly, they're, I think they're mm. better cold. One thousand percent. I just like them cold, cold, cold. Yes. Wait. So Travis added a photo? I don't know what that means, but I'm excited. He added a photo, so now it doesn't come up. So it, originally oh, he was just he was blue just, ball. He was, <laughs> then he added a photo. Travis says blue ball. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> maybe, maybe that'll change next week. But I think I think you're done. I think you're stuck with it right there, buddy. <laughs> Uh, this is just working out swimmingly. <laughs> exactly, David. The traditional beers, it's so cool to see them coming back. And I'm actually really happy that I've developed a taste for them, that I really enjoy them. Yeah, me too. And I'm not stuck in that. I feel less pretentious. Yeah, I, I guess. No? I, I don't know. I just, I like them. And I'm glad I do. Oh, yeah. I like, to, I, I like to have an open mind to different beers, and I'm really glad that these beers that I didn't shut them out and say I'm never trying them again. You got to be open minded. You got to be like with food. You got to try stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, we were having a we were having a discussion. Um, I was talking to my kids today, and they were one of the kids was like, "Yeah, I don't like fish." And we were talking about it, and other kids were like, "You don't like fish?" We talk, and he's like, "Yeah, I've never really had it." So we were like, "You can't say you don't like it if you've never had it. You got to try stuff." So same thing with beer. I mean, like. Except Flanders Reds. Oh God, I hate those beers. I like them. <laughs> I'm like that with um, with salmon. I love all kinds of seafood. And I love fish. I love pretty much every kind of fish there is, except salmon. That's weird. I do not have a taste for salmon. So I still try every year or two years when I have the chance to taste a bit of salmon. Like somebody has some salmon, I have a chance to get to taste it. I try it to see like maybe I've developed that taste. No. Never have. I See, just. I'm not a huge ooh. fish lover at all, but I like salmon. No, I can do any other kind of fish. Salmon, oof. Like, you guys go into that all you can eat sushi? Hot sauce on it. Frank's, I don't know if Frank's would do it. Just the flavor that's in the salmon. I don't. People love it. And and I'm sure it's, a, it's good for some people, but yeah. And I try it. I want to like it, I, but I just don't. Yeah, okay. That's okay. It's more for me. I know we're going kind of fast, but but the next one looks really good. Well, I also have an empty glass. Is it time? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
Hey, Kristen. Kristen's here. Hey, hey. Oh, she just got back from graduation or something. Dun, dun, dun. I saw this in the store, and I was really excited for it. I picked it up right away. The The pictures on it reminded me of um, uh, Upper Pass Brewing, but it said on the front of it, it said Stowe Style, and Upper Pass isn't from Stowe, so I had to like dig in and look at it, and here, this is a collab from Von Trapp Brewing and Upper Pass. Hmm. And then when I looked a little deeper into it, I learned that, well, I, I knew Von Trapp. Actually, Nate educated me on Von Trapp when, when he went to Vermont. He brought back everything they had, and we got to try all their... It was weird. After he went to Von Trapp, he spent a week wearing a skirt and carrying an umbrella. So oddly enough, <laughs> same family. Yeah. That it's those people. Um, Nate, um, um, don't get me wrong. The founder is the grandson of the Baron. It's like I, I'm pretty. Yeah, I, I'm pretty like, sure it's the grandson of the Baron. After the sound of music, they came over to Vermont and started making beer. Started lodge. Yeah. No, they started the lodge. Beer didn't start until the 2010. So I put up two different slides, and I forgot to tell Nate this one. I put up the Von Trapp slide, mm -hmm. and I put up the Upper Pass slide, because they both had some pretty cool information. And the one thing I didn't know is Upper Pass is a super, super tiny, um, I think they're only five barrel, or... or a five barrel brewery? Super small. That's like um, barely I'm my I'm pretty garage. sure that's what the fact said. And then... Any of their beers that get distributed throughout Vermont are all contract brewed at Von Trapp. Cool. Yes. So this is the Stowe Style Kolsch, a dry hopped Kolsch style ale, a collab between Trapp Brewing and Upper Pass. And it looks like they're doing a little Frisbee golf on there. Look at that. I like Frisbee golf. All right. So that's what the can looks like. I have developed a love for Kolsch's, so I'm excited for this one. Let's see what we get. Do you have any Kolsch facts in there? I don't have any Kolsch facts in there because I, I didn't know we were doing a Kolsch. I don't, I don't, yeah, but I don't know what, what the... But I, I do... I, I, I'm going to be quiet while you pour that. Oh, look how clear it is. Oh. Oh. But, but while you're gushing over your Kolsch, I feel like I need to backpedal and, and talk about lagers a little bit. Because we blew through that lager we without did. talking about look it. At, look at this beer, though. Look at that beer can, man. The head on that, the lacing, that beautiful, super light color. Just, oh, this, I think, I think this is going to be good. I'm taking a little bit before I, uh, Nate's already up. Hand it over! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so we did blow through lagers. So you taste that and then get into your, oh, your lagers. Is it good? Oh, yeah. It smells good. All day. That's just... All day. That's just so good. That's just so good. <clears throat> that is clean. So that is crispy clean. That is just so good. Wow. Man. So good. I, I love that. I mean, do I do I go back to the loggers or do we just keep going? What do you want to do? You talk, give the facts that you had about loggers because what I when I read them, I thought they were super cool. Right. But I thought you had made it through them all. I, for, I just forgot. Oh. Uh, all right. So we drank the lager from Forest of Maine. And a lager is a beer that's been brewed and conditioned at a very, very low temperature. Um. They're usually pale, light amber, or they could be thick. You can make a dark lager too. All depends on the malt bill that you're putting in there. Um, the more, the one that we're most familiar with that's most typical is a pale lager, and um, the word lager actually comes from German to mean storage because um, back in the old days they used to store. The loggers in cold caves to heave cold. I mean, if you've ever been to Pottsville and to the Yingling Brewery, mm. you not. know they the caves are all still there. You can um, they, they don't store them. They don't store beer in them anymore. They do. They have like it's like a restaurant down there or something. 
isn't there? So, yeah. yeah, there's something like that. Um, you can go down there and see where they where before they got so big that they really did put Yingling Lager down in caves. Yeah, oh, this is good. Oh, this is super. David Archer is educating us on Colchis. Ooh. Mm. A Kolsch is an ale. Okay, I can taste that. I, I can see the difference. And, and you know, we've we've drank three of these. You can tell all three of these are related. Yeah, but you can t also tell that this does not have the crispness. It's super clean, but it's not the crispness of that lager yeast. And there's now that you know, it's there. And there is a. This one has the most I'm picking up the most floral notes mm -hmm. in this one out of all three absolutely mm -hmm. it's really good it's really really good boobies yeah boobies it's the one in the caves the boobies are in the caves yeah mm -hmm. yes but that's not yingling that's um another place like in Mannheim I think and I think oh, it's closed another place. I always wanted to go to boobies because uh, uh boobies has some really cool Restaurants and they had these cool like themed. Is that actually the way you say it? Boobies. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like a nice place to live. <laughs> I think we should take a field trip to boobies. <laughs> it does. It sounds like a great idea. Great idea. Do we, does, like cameras or no cameras? I don't know. I don't know if they allow cameras on boobies. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Joy. Mount Joy, that's what it's like. Mount Joy, there Mount you Joy. go. Mm. That is delicious. Yeah. Um, real quick, in the mix, three for three tonight? What do you think? of the, We're making you try all our beers. We never do this. The only one I was not a fan of is the tea. The yeah. tea one. Ah. Too, too much adjunct flavor, right? right. It's just a little, right. like, it's not, not, beer not, beer, not enough but beer. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's good. It's good. So the last beer of the night, yep, is a brewery that I swore off a long time ago. Do tell. Because of their terrible tasting beers and continually suckered me into buying their cans and then was super disappointed by those cans. Mm. So I bought this because it suckered me in. Against your better judgment. Uh, yeah, way against my better judgment. So this could turn out to be a total dud. Uh-oh. Although it seemed, sitting on the shelf, like I really wanted it. So I just, I got to warn warn you on that one. Okay. This could be, a, this could be total well, crap. And it can be because... We're three for three so far. Yeah, they were really good ones. Too. All the beers yeah, we've had tonight. And, and it's crazy because... How do I frame this? You and I have chased countless beers. <laughs> uh, IPAs. Highest rated IPAs on a, I've sent to New Orleans and Louisiana for beer, and I've 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 traded out to California for the best rated IPA in the country, and and you're chasing the barrel aged beers with all the adjuncts, and we're hopping mm -hmm. on the internet, we're buying, we we're waiting for the countdown to start, and then we're hopping on, and well, we hope we don't get shut, and then we just drank these three. There, there were too many beers sitting on shelves. <laughs> at the beer distributor for me to buy them all that I wanted. I'm like, oh, that looks crispy and delicious. This looks wonderful. That looks wonderful. I had I had a ton in my cart, and then I had to walk backwards and put some back on the shelves because I didn't want to have too many. But I still got six, at least six or eight more back there. What we're saying, kids, is go out to your local distributor, um, check the notes tonight. Check mm -hmm. the notes when we do the recap of the beers we had tonight. Drink that imprint pilsner, drink that forest and main lager, and get your hands on this Kolsch. Uh, the first two, you're supporting local, which is excellent. Good for you. Good for y y you. Yeah, right there. Okay. Right there. Okay. So do that. Second, that 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 third beer we had is what's it's a shelfie. And my God, that third beer. If it's not my favorite, it's like 
It was good. <laughs> it was really good. So the first three beers we had were magnificent. And the tea beer. If you like iced tea, get that beer. And if you're... I have it back there, but it's not it's not coming out tonight. Um, mm-hmm. You can get now in Pennsylvania on shelves, you can get a Von Trapp Lager variety pack. So four different Von Trapp Lagers all in a variety pack. I think you get like three of each can. It was not expensive, but if you're not sure exactly what type of lager you like, you know, will you like a Marzern or a Dunkel, you can get that 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 Von Trapp variety pack. They make killer killer lagers. I and, and we you can try them. We were going to do a variety pack challenge, but I think I already lost because the Von Trapp variety pack made yeah, it a winner. Yeah, I that one. Yeah, I think that one would be really I think good I lost. For, for variety pack. We were going to go head to head with variety packs, but I think he won. Oh, I thought we were going to do like I bring one one night, you bring one the other night. We were, and then we were going to see which one was better. Oh, I didn't know it was a contest. I thought you said it was a contest. No, I just just like, let's just let's just do it. Like, mm. hey, I found this one that sounds great. Let's let's go for it. I think he already won though. I, I I, I'm gonna have a hard time matching that. Um, what was the tea beer uh, Archer wants to know? Oh, that was Amagong sleeveless tea. Amagong sleeveless tea. It was really good. Yeah, it was <laughs> shockingly great. Five percent. It's made with black tea, lemon, and natural flavors. It's good. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna drink that all summer. It was good. You know, that's also kind of like. An unexpected bonus of doing this show is that we kind of stumble across stuff that we may not normally gravitate to and yeah. drink. So um, I did not expect that to come out of this. So, bing, that's a nice little perk. Yeah, that was a winner. Um, it made me think of it because I saw that. I not saw, but I had that. That you had that Earl Grey tea beer yep. last week. Levante tea. And then beer. I saw the. I saw another tea. I was like, oh, a tea beer. Got to try it. And I almost walked right past it. But I'm like, well, it's got tea in it. I'll grab it. And I'm so glad I did. What do you know? Winning. All right. So here we go. I think it's time for the last one. Sure. You ready for it? Yeah. All right. I've had this one cooling in ice and salt water because I forgot to put it in the fridge. So dun, hopefully dun, she dun. got cold enough. This is called Orange Crusher. It's an orange flavored lager, which sounds like it'll be refreshing if they get this citrus just right. It's by Captain Lawrence Brewing Company. I'm a little... No, I shouldn't be like that. Okay. Sounds Mm -hmm. good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see how it sounds when it opens. Sound good. (laughs) Beautiful sound. Okay. All right, Captain. Don't disappoint me. Here we go. Let's see how she pours. Nice and clear. Very nice color to it. Pass it on to you, sir. Oh, great carbonation. Beautiful color. Good head. Lacing's all right, but the color looks really nice. It has orange in it. I know, too many adjuncts, but give it a try anyway, Nate. The conservative pork. I smell orange. This has the potential to be super refreshing. Okay. Not bad. I don't hate it. Oh. <clears throat> I need to go again. Nate hates it. <laughs> it's like I drink like bubbles. <laughs> soapy. It's soapy. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's soapy. <sighs> they got me again. It's interesting that okay. So in your lead in, I didn't realize you were talking about Captain Lawrence. And they get me too. Fuckers. Every time. Every time. They there's that one IPA they did. It was like called Powder Dreams or Green Powder. That was good. Good-ish. But then that beer was the gateway to suck me in to try a bunch of their other stuff. They have those great gimmicks like Fudgy the Whale Stout, which is absolutely terrible. Overall, I would have to say I'm not a fan of Captain Lawrence beers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and that's why I prefaced it that way. And... Also, like, uh, yeah, Nate's not a fan either. He's right. Nate hit it on the head. It's soapy. It's a soapy beer. 
I want, you know who I want to do this? I want Imprint to do a lager with a, a touch of orange. Just a touch of citrus. And I think, I mean, there's potential there. Even though this is not properly executed, there is potential there. The yeah. flavors are nice together. A, a, a citrus zippy lager? Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is not yuck bucket worth. I'll no. drink it. No, no, I would finish that. If it was the only thing, if it if somebody had cans of this and Coors Light at, at a party, I would drink this. Oh yeah, I'd be I'd be drinking a couple of these. I'm chasing. There ah. you go. <laughs> hey neighbor. <laughs> Um, Get out the house longer! <laughs> so we've been remiss. Uh, the Von Trapp Upper Pass collab, mm -hmm. 3.9 on Untapped. <sighs> this bad boy is a four as a Orange Crusher 4.8% yeah. ABV, 3.49 on Untapped. <sighs> no, no. I think that Von Trapp Upper Pass, the one called Stowe Style, that Kolsch, should be... I'd give that a 4.1. That's really... That's a, that's nice. That's my second favorite of the night. Um, between the imprint, the forest in Maine, and the Von Trapp, I don't see there being a variance of more than a tenth of a percent. No, no, they're all good. They're, they're all, all right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this wasn't bad. Honestly, I think if we had had this first, we would have said, oh, it's not bad. But we had we were spoiled by those three really good beers. Yeah, but I also and then we got this. This just isn't executed well. It's not. It's it's not perfect. It's it's not. Um, you know who else gets me while we're on the topic of breweries that get me, like like uh, what they get you? I know it drives me crazy. Do you have a list? Do you have breweries that get you? <laughs> Captain Lawrence always gets me. Always. Um, there are a few, but. Not to the point that I would have to call them out besides Captain Lawrence. They get me every time. So I shouldn't say the brewery that gets me? Oh, yeah, you should. Single cut. Oh, see, I like some single cuts. I like some too, but then yeah. some are real stinkers. And they get you, yeah. Because I'm like, yeah. I kind of like, they they have whimsical can art. It's like cartoony, and I'm like, ooh. Wow. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. They do have good can art. Almost it's, like clip arty. Yeah, single yeah. cut gets me. Yeah, I can see that, but not single cut does not get me in any way as consistently as Captain Lawrence gets me. Well, I just stopped buying Captain Lawrence. So do so did I. I swore them off completely. I would never buy them again. And then I saw Until this and I again, and I bought it again. Darn it! I did it. It's my fault. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I should have just listened to myself. Um, why do I have notes on saisons? I'm not sure why you had notes on Saison. That confused me because um, I think you should skip the Saison notes. Forget that. Yeah. And this is way more fun. Okay. So we just drank. Or... Yeah, we can go through quick. We can go through quick. Or we save it for another show. We can go through quick. Okay, go through quick. <laughs> Maybe in depth for another show. Yeah. Okay. 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 So the focus is summer because his summer started. Mine is not. But I'm there. I'm there soon. And in summertime, like, yeah, I summer hard. And summer is fun. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. I do a lot of summer. In fact, you guys are going to be sick of seeing me in the Facebook group because I'm going to be summering from the deck constantly. I love summer. It's, it's like tomorrow I will be playing Alice Cooper and I'll be dancing around and I'll be very, very happy. Because school is finally out, and um, these are all perfect, perfect summertime beers. They are. Really and um, some of my favorite things to do, like, I'm a game guy. So we've already talked about the social aspect of this whole world that we live in, mm -hmm. and how this was an offshoot of not being able to be social. But I'm really looking forward to, like, things are kind of back to normal, so I'm looking forward to getting together and hanging out. In fact... Um, Today after lunch at work, we had a little social thing. There was some things that I even forgot to put on here. Uh, that ladder game, ladder ball. You ever play ladder yeah, ball? Yeah, I have ladder ball. Ladder ball's fun. I like ladder ball. Corn. The kids, it's no fun with kids. They get it all tangled. Well, yeah. Uh, that That is definitely for a, a game when no kids are around. Well, because it's, you have to have like, 
patience and technique. You can't just whip them like bolas. Well, then you they need... just go grab them all, and they, they all get twisted and somehow braided. You know, oh, it's the worst. Kids, man. Yeah, but it's a good game. I like it. Yeah, it is a good game. It's and it's a great, games. it's a great summer party game. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a block party on my neighborhood every summer, so ladder ball is always part of it. Cornhole, I love cornhole. Absolutely, cornhole is part of it. Um, have you ever played pickleball? No. Do you know what pickleball is? No. Um, Does it involve a pickle? It, no, no pickle no. is hurt in the game of pickleball. Then I might not be interested. Yeah, you might not, but it's like <laughs> tennis and ping pong merge together. So there's like running and dodging and darting. At there's balls. running. Yeah. Oh, I'm out. I, know. I like it. I like it. I like it. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we got, we oh, nice. Got <laughs> what about uh? Single cut gets me. Single cut gets me. Rotunda gets me. Rotund- Rotunda is a good one. Yeah. I don't drink a lot of Rotunda beer. Yeah, I've been gotten a few times by them, but single cut, everyone agrees. How do you feel about darts? Lawn darts or regular darts? Regular darts. Regular darts are really fun when it's raining outside. I have the dart board on my covered porch. Mm-hmm. So when you got rain or just poor weather, you can still sit on the porch and toss darts. That's nice. How about pool? I suck. It's a neat game. Okay. But I'm terrible. Um, it takes up a lot of space. Let's talk beer pong for a second. Mm. Just a second. Very controversial. When I say to you, we're playing beer pong, in your head, what do you see? I see cups lined up in a triangle, filled with two to three ounces of beer each, ping pong balls on either side, end of a table. Am, am I? Yeah, that's, okay. that is definitely one style of beer pong. There's another style? Yeah. I've come to learn this. Okay, what's the other style? The other style is actual ping pong. No. With, with doubles. Yeah. Two people on one side. I've played both. Two people on the other side. And each person has a, a cup. You take the paddle like, like this. You take the paddle. And you're. I'm at the back right corner. I go, I go in. And I go up. A paddle length in and a paddle length up. And I put my cup there. And you play like slow motion beer pong, and you're trying to hit the ball into the person's cup. Yeah, I played both. Out. So the triangle version I play, yeah. um, people in my circles refer to that as chandeliers. Chandeliers? <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> yeah, chandeliers. That's what they call That's what my neighbor That's calls nonsense. it. Nonsense. No. That's no. what he calls it. Your neighbor is wrong. <laughs> well, I've heard it. I've don't come to the block called, party because you're I've heard people to... call it Beirut. Have you ever heard it called Beirut? Mm-mm. I've heard that before. Beirut. But I've never heard chandeliers. Why Beirut? I don't know. I don't know. I just told them they were wrong too. That's random. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> um, hey, you want to go play a game of Warsaw? Yeah. <laughs> and there's all these, <laughs> you know, there's always, I love house rules. There's always house well, rules. Well, I'm, no, I'm a firm believer in house rules. Okay. If, if I'm coming over to your house and you have Pong set up, I say to you, what are the rules? What are the house rules? Because you're allowed to. That's it. Yeah. There are and, and I abide by, I'm a big mm-hmm. fan of abiding by house rules. So the other side of, of the other side of the studio is actually, if I flip a switch, it's all black light. All the walls are painted in glow in the dark. <laughs> you don't want to look at that. Um, <laughs> like and a, I have a, like... I have a full size. Um, <laughs> there, there's messages. I gave we had we had a party. I gave everyone glow in the dark paint. All okay. the walls are all painted. Okay. So the um, <laughs> the beer pong table is all glow in the dark. You play glow in the dark, and all the house rules are written in glow in the dark. That's paint fabulous. All around the all around the table. So would I have to read that, or could I just say what are the house rules? While while someone else is setting up, you would probably just end up reading them. Okay, but I mean, it's like you only get one re rack upon request, so you have to ask for your re rack when you decide you want it. It's not at four; it's just upon request. Um, nobody blows. I hate the. I hate you can blow it out of the cup. That drives me crazy. Don't no, blow. Don't no, blow on no, that. No, um, no. Uh, no bounces. No, I don't like bounces. No, um, just I think those are the general house rules that I have. Okay, there's like there's a couple, 
Like one, you know, if there was a fight, I'd be like, "All right, we're making a new rule." <laughs> but that was it. At my house, all the cups are filled with water, so we don't have to constantly refill, and there's no mm-hmm. arguing over any of that kind of nonsense. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the dirty ball. Nope, it's got yeah. water, and it's got like a little. I've got these like little marker rocks that I drop in, so they don't ever tip over. Because sometimes we play outside, oh, okay. and it's windy out there. I have, I did a GoFundMe. And there's these special cup inserts that you pour your your beer in, but back, then the ball... Are we back to boobies again? No. Oh, okay. No, the ball never actually goes into the beer when it hits. You pull out the little cup insert, and you drink the beer from the from the, from the the cup. They were pretty cool. You know, it would be um, fun. I just had an idea. A tournament? Imagine your rectangle... Filled with all different styles of beer. Mm-hmm. We've done that, and we've also done. So let's say you're up. Let's say I'm up, and you're shooting against me, and you're aiming for that goddamn mother Flanders Red that you know I don't want to drink. <laughs> How much fun would that be? We've done the middle one has a wicked shot in it. Like middle one's got tequila. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh no, I don't want that. But like, yeah, you're gonna get it. <laughs> and then, and then. The, the other team, you take turns who's got a drink. Right. So you can really hammer somebody if you want and to. And if you lose and you ne- and you didn't clear that Wait a cup, second. then Wait you a end second. up drinking. Wait a second. It's, it's all fun. coming together, yeah. kids. It's all It's coming. a good time. Yeah, it sounds fun, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. All right. I also have, um, at the lake, I have a beer pong raft where it's got <laughs> cup holders. And you just blow And we bring it out for special occasions. And you just stand, like, waist deep in the lake. And just just play like that. It sounds fabulous. It's, now it's that's really, got to be hard because yeah. there's a little sway. It lasts a little longer than you would think. Yeah, because yeah. you got the waves coming yeah, in yeah, from the yeah. lake. It's, so it's you not gotta, a stable platform yeah. you're throwing at. But it's pretty fun. Yeah, I'm it's I'm fun. a big fan of beer punk. In yeah. fact, uh, yeah. Well, I'll save that story for another day. <laughs> uh, because we, as as succinct as we are going to be, we're running. So you know what time I told it is. You. you know what time it is. It is time to see if Tom. Wants to be a Cicerone. Are we really? <laughs> so you want to be a Cicerone? <laughs> you get so into that song. <laughs> Something like that. It's like a it's like a cobra hypnotizing me. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Now, kids, tight. a little controversy here in the low expectation studio. The Cicerone questions are running dry, so we are we think that you guys enjoy game time. So uh, we are going to be. Um, Oh, washers are fun, Sean. Great yeah. summer game. Yeah, I love washers. I taught it to the kids. It's very fun. Uh, we're going to be coming up with a new game. We're going to be testing new games uh, moving forward. We had a couple ideas, so just be mm-hmm. prepared and get ready for that. All right. And then maybe, oh. hopefully, eventually we come back to, like, Cicerone level two. We'll see. Yeah, that's going to be way harder. Yeah. I'll probably just fail all those. But anyway. Which could be fun. Yeah. All right, first question, Tom. So which of these styles is typically the least tart Sour or acidic? The least. Lager. Question number one. <laughs> All right, answer number one. A uh, gooza. <sighs> answer number two. Creek. Mm. Number three. The bane of my existence. The Flanders Red. <laughs> or Yum. number four. Jubal. Which one of those is going to be the least sour? Double. Double? A double. Double? Double. You, sir, are correct. Whew. The double. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was kind of easy. Yeah, they don't even really have it. I mean, a double doesn't really have a sour at all. Okay. No. Nah, okay. Nah, nah. I thought I was going to have to choose, like, the next one was going to be. Yeasty, caramel. Yeah, I thought, no, I thought the next one was going to be, like, another sour. I'm like, man, like a Saison or something. I'm like, jeez. Yeah, question I'm number be able two. To pick that out. Which beer is not an example of an American style that originated in Europe? An American style that came from Europe. Okay. Uh, the American IPA? Came from Europe. The American Pale Ale. 
the robust porter. Robust came from, porter. Came from Europe, though. The Cali Common. Which one of those did not come from Europe, Tom? Okay, so from what I know about California Common is I really do love a California Common beer. It is almost like lagered in the open air on the top of buildings in heat. Steamship, wasn't it yeah. called Steamship? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to say California Common just from the history that I know of that beer. I think that originated more here than anywhere else. Let's see if you're right, Tom. Yeah. Indeed, the California Common did not originate in Europe. Two for two. The pale ale, though, couldn't. Hmm. That was iffy. All right, buddy. Frozen frosted glassware. Which one of these statements <laughs> makes sense? <laughs> Where does it belong? In the trash can. Oh, I thought you were going to say Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> the frozen frosted glassware. <laughs> Is acceptable, especially for pale loggers. Is not recommended. Can cause foaming and makes beer too cold. Is recommended if the draft system temperature is too warm. Is not recommended. Causes glassware to break more easily. I'm going to go with B, but geez, A or C could possibly be correct. Just B... That's what that's what I want it to be. All right, he says letter B. Yes. And letter B, letter B. Yes, is correct. Three for three, buddy. You're on a roll. Teaching words of wisdom about the beer. About the beer. Tom, if a draft system has foam on beer, a fob detector, which one of these makes sense? <laughs> I've never even heard of a fob detector. <laughs> I've got one in my pocket right now. <laughs> Is it going off? Uh, they will fill the draft line with beer. I think you know this. If you just okay. focus. Ready? Does it fill the draft line with beer if the keg runs out? Does it need to be reset after a keg change? Oh, I'm sorry. Does it need to be reset after a keg change? Usually by venting, releasing foam and gas from the chamber. No. Must be cleaned in at least every three months during the regular cleaning. Or, most likely a direct draw draft system. Which one of those is correct about the FOB detector? Well, if I'm going to guess that a foam on beer detector is some kind of a cutoff that senses if a keg is too shaken up or you get to the end so you don't fill your whole line with, with foam. That would suck. And then have to do that full, which... You've, you've been in that line. Like, can I have a number three? Psh, it'll be 12 and a half minutes. Damn it. Um, but, wow. but here's these three ounces on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if this exists, a foam on beer detector? Whoa, it just went off. I would think that, <laughs> I would think that B, you're going to have to reset it because you're going to have to do like reload the keg. So it's going to somehow shut you off. And tell you, nope, nope, it's out. We're going to need to refill the keg. But also, C made sense. Um, they must be cleaned. I mean, geez, if you're not clean, if you're only clean that every three months, you got a problem. You don't want a dirty, so I you think don't want a dirty detector. C, yes, I think C is bad. It should be cleaned more frequently than three months. I'm going to go with B just because I'm imagining this super cool system that shuts down your draft line as soon as it hits foam whoop, so that you whoop. don't fill your line with foam. You retap a keg and boom, you're up and running again. And that is so cool. Why doesn't every brewery have that? <sighs> you good? Yeah. All right. Not only are you good, you're right. Yeah, that is so See, cool. You're I've so never worried. Heard of, I've you're never so heard worried. of that. Now you did. I got to know how much a fob system costs. Fob. <sighs> It's Fabio. F-O-B. Last one. Here we go. F-O-B system. This is the most popular beer style in the world, Tom. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Is it the German Pilsner? In the world. Is it the Czech premium pale lager? In the <laughs> Only world. Only if it's premium? Yep. Okay. <laughs> is it the American lager? It's hard because they're all kind of the same beer. Yeah. Or is it the ubiquitous IPA? Which one of those is the most popular beer style on the planet? 
I'm gonna blame AB InBev, InBev for this yep. and call it American Lager. Five for five, buddy. Yes, that was a good one. Five for five. That was good. He's riding high. Damn. He had didn't have confidence about the fob, but he pulled it off. I had no idea that existed. That is so cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna be up all night reading about FOB systems now. Now I need now I'm gonna have one by tomorrow. Fob. I need that Fob. immediately shipped. I need an FOB system for my one keg. So you want to be a Cicerone. <laughs> uh, so bad. I hope you enjoy that music as it much as we so do. bad. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot Aching to mention me Washers. Washers is a great game. Washers is a fabulous game. Oh, but we game. did. Um, you did fail to mention my most favorite drinking the, game. Oh, I, well, they weren't necessarily drinking games. They were kind of like. But go ahead. fun game. Bimini Ring. I don't know what that is. Uh, usually a six foot plus arm comes off of a wall or a tree. Yeah. A string hangs down and there's a ring on the oh, end. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't you know it was called Bimini Ring. My yeah, neighbor's Bimini got one ring. on his tree. Yeah, I have one everywhere I go. I used to have I used to take a portable one to Buffett shows with me. Is there one in um, here right now? No, not in the not oh, okay. not in the basement. Okay. I always have them outside. Got it. Um Tragedy struck There's too many glasses. Tra here. Yeah. <laughs> Tragedy struck this winter. The the ring that I that I installed at the lake. Like I made a ring for the lake, installed it on, put up a scorekeeper and everything with like golf golf tees so you yeah, can keep yeah, your yeah, score yeah, and yeah. play. Yeah. Some jerk off stole it. Ripped it off. Ripped it off. Didn't steal it because the screws are still in the tree where it was. Wait, so like they just they ripped, ripped it, it off. And they, threw must it on have, the ground? they must have trashed it. It's gone. I don't know. So I came up with a new invention. You should be able to tase people like that. Oh, it's the worst. Like you just ruin our fun, man. Like everybody at For the no lake, everybody at, at our whole dock would would stop by and like you know have a beer, throw the ring a little. So this my new invention hook goes right in the tree, and uh, you know those like a, a flagpole, like a big full size, like a six foot flagpole. Sure. Yeah. So I'm gonna put the bracket on the tree. And I'm just going to bring my flagpole, stick it in, and the string's going to come off the flagpole. Uh, I'm so it's portable. Ring, I'm going to take my ring home with me. You're going to take your ring and go home. Nobody's going to be able to break it then. So I'm, I thought, I'm actually making that on Friday. Tomorrow. I thought you dug like a punji steak <laughs> at the bottom so that if someone was... I electrified the ring. So everybody... <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach us all. <laughs> oh, I just had a great idea for a new segment to finish every show with. And it, in the mix, this is going to require some effort on your part, buddy. Uh -oh. um, what was the last thing in the mix ate from a vending machine this week? <laughs> <laughs> is it always going to be Slim Jim? Is that going to be the that answer? Would get him in too much trouble. We can't do that. <laughs> he does not eat from vending machines, Danielle. He doesn't do it. He's a trash panda. I, he's, he's never done it before. He's a trash panda. He stopped when you told him to. He's a trash panda. <laughs> 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 All right, dude, let's wrap it because we're like perfectly at one hour. Do you want me to stall for 30 seconds so we can? No, that's not correct. I started a little late. Oh, so in that case, ladies and gentlemen, Thursday night, it's late. We made you stay up late. In fact, a lot of our regulars aren't here. It's our fault. Oh, Joe showed up. A lot cool. of people are on, yeah. Hey, we just want to say thanks for hanging in there. And you know what? Look, this idea in my head is not going away. We're going to do the Tiki Bar this summer. I'm okay. going to the Tiki Bar, and I'm inviting everybody to come with me. Hopefully, you won't be at the lake. Hopefully, you'll be home. We're going to go to the Tiki Bar. And just drop us a note if 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 you like or dislike the the later time. You know, is, is the later time better for summer, some summer sessions? Is it not? You let us let us know. We're curious. We always want to, uh, as much as we suck, we always want to be better, too. Ish. We yeah. try. We're not very good, but we try. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, episode 29 is coming to an end. And if I had to sum up this episode in just a couple of words, I would say, man, that's refreshing. It was crispy and good. So wonderful. Night, guys. Thanks for coming. Give me another. Good night. It's a bugging knife. <laughs>